This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Able. Alma 4 star mounts. I'll be brutally honest, I don't know much about them, nor have I ever seen one. And maybe that's because recently they changed their name to ZRO Delta. But even then, I still haven't seen many, nor heard of them. However, I was delighted to see that this thing popped up on an optic that Abel had sent in to me for review. And it's interesting because it's got a couple of interesting features that I like. And um, it's something different. Now, you can find these, although a slight different iteration, but more or less the exact same mount for sale right now for around 250 or so. But what do you really get for your money? Well, starting at the bottom, you get some really interesting features right off the bat. I'm not a big fan of these adjustment nuts. They're a little bit big, a little bit bulky. They are plastic with steel inserts. You do see that they are spring-loaded, however, which is a nice feature. I do like that because if you're setting this up on your rail, you push, lock it in place, and you can set it and see how it's going to work for you without locking cams or torquing it down all the way. So it's really nice and easy for a quick setup. However, as a result of them having so many moving parts over here, you don't have a nice square block that's going to interlock with your pick rail to give it a really nice firm engagement. Instead, you get these round shafts that you could see right there and the center locking bolt. All in all, not the end of the world. I would like to see, however, at least a couple of locking blocks in there because once you have a flat surface against a flat surface, you have a really good mating face, you don't have to worry about marring anything up. These round shafts might end up rolling part of the pick rail over. And, you know, it's probably unlikely, but it's still something that I think about. Moving on to the side, you can see that this is set up for 34 millimeter, which we'll talk about what scope, what came in this probably later or in the video for that optic. But you can see that they've gone through the trouble of at least trying to lighten this thing up as much as they can, which is always nice. Speaking of this little spine that we're here, it's flat, but it's not that wide. A little bit wider would have been nice, again, only for my form of leveling. But as far as weight savings go, it's not too bad. Speaking of weight, what does this thing clock in at? Granted, this is a cantilever and it is for 34 millimeter, but it comes in just over seven ounces, 7.3. The only thing I have to really compare that to is an American Defense Recon non-cant 34 millimeter. And you can clearly see that the ADM is a little bit heavier, about a half an ounce. Now, is that a lot, half an ounce? No, not really. But if these were to be all, all said and done equally, as far as the height and the cant, this would probably be about an ounce heavier. So... All in all, it's not that heavy of a mount. From there, we're going to move on to the caps, which you can clearly see are four bolt. So we have four T25 driven fasteners, and you can see they stick out quite a bit through the bottom of the cap. Now, there isn't that ho a whole lot of surface area under the cap. The overall height is not that thick, but this is very lightweight. And I like to see how much threads are sticking out. So this way you know that you're going to have real positive engagement. You don't have to worry about stripping anything out. Again, you're only going to be torquing these to about 15 to 20 inch pounds. So anything more than that's going to be overkill anyway. The overall fit and finish so far seems to be okay. There's a little bit of a, a sharp edge on this. It's not raised, fortunately, because then if it was, it would damage the finish on our, on our scope. But it's not really all that beveled. Now, moving on to the base, we find some interesting things. The finish is okay. The anodizing feels all right. It, As far as the nail test, you can clearly see the nail rubs off, but it wipes off well enough. That's fine. But when you look deeper into it, you can see a witness mark right there where my left thumbnail is and right there going lengthwise. It's faint, but it's there. Now that could just be damage maybe from an optic, but when you look at the back, you can see the exact same witness marks. Now, do I have to assume that it was another optic that damaged this? Or is that a slight raised edge? And if I had to put money on it, I would say it's a raised edge. I can't really convey feel to you, but I do feel something. And I've been a precision machinist for a long time. And the fact that I can feel a little bit something means that that's probably it. And if we were to look at the optic that was mounted in this, yes, you'll get a sneak peek. You can see right there is a slight witness mark that matches up as well as right there. 
We can rotate this around. There are more witness marks. And even on top has a little bit of something. So all in all, the machining quality on this is a bit subpar. Maybe that's why they changed their name. And maybe that's why you don't see many of these around. But I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to put an optic in this. We're going to see how well it resets to zero. And we'll go from there. All right, we got the SH4 Gen 2 4 to 16 by 50 by Arkin inside the Alma 4 star mount. It is tightened, finger tight, as tight as it'll go with my hands. I'm doing both snug at the same time, then front, then rear, tight, as tight as it'll go with my hands, nothing more, because that's what this is designed for. So we're gonna loosen it up, which takes a little bit of goose up, because these nuts are really sharp. Look at that sharp nuts. Loose, push forward, snug them both up at the same time. Go to the front, snug, rear, snug. And it looks like we reset perfectly. Let's do this again. Gonna loosen up the nuts if they wanna come loose. That's the front, that's the back. You gotta push over to disengage the springs. It is loose, as you can see. Snug them both up. There we go. Go to the front to tight, rear to snug a little bit more. And we are seeming to still be very consistent. One last time for good luck. We're gonna loosen them up. There we go. Push, wiggle, forward. Snug them both up. Yeah. Go to the front, tight, and then the rear, tight. And there you have it. Even though I did not torque this down, this mount should be able to be used while finger tight. So I think this is a pretty good test of that. So there you have it. This thing performs fairly well, but overall I can't help but feel like this is not a great mount. I don't like the fact that these are plastic. I don't like the fact that you have these notches on the inside that are, if you're gonna do this right, have to absolutely be taken down. Lapping this would be a must. And this is the first mount that I've gotten my hands on that really requires that. Everything else has been really true, really smooth, pre precisely machined. And they haven't left marks on the tube of any scope that I put it on. Whereas opposed to this, like we already looked at, there are marks on this tube because of it. And that's a, that's a big no-no for me. For the price, buy a LaRue. Buy an American Defense, buy a Midwest Industries, buy two Midwest Industries. Why the fuck not? Uh, yeah, yeah, unless you really want this, but I don't know why you would. Anyway, that's all for right now. Abel, thank you very much for sending this in for review, and thank you all very much for watching. As always, see you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.